Hola muchachos, ¿qué tal? Buenos días. Aquí tienen el horario para hoy, martes el 17 de enero. Due for today, two assignments that we began last class, the worksheet on ser versus estar, and the ser estar conjugation puzzle. You can watch the videos uploaded for both of those for how to do them. You have a quiz on ser versus estar next class. And that'll be our objective for today is identifying the difference in use between those two verbs to describe your location, feelings, emotions, places of origin, etc. Also to be able to count to at least a hundred, we'll begin that today and continue that next class as we begin chapter 2b. Uh, Warm-up for today is centered around numbers. We'll review the notes on ser estar that we looked at last week. Uh, a um, PowerPoint, rather, that goes over ser versus estar. We'll go over the two assignments that are due tonight and then go over new notes on the numbers all the way from zero to a thousand. And do some guided practice. Here are your warm-up questions. Uh, for today's warm-up, answer the following questions using the appropriate number in each of your responses. Number one, ¿Cuántos años tienes? Is asking, how old are you? And you're going to begin your response with, yo tengo. Yo tengo, and then how old you are. For example, yo tengo 15 años. For question number two, ¿Qué hora es? That's asking, what time is it now? For example, son las siete de la tarde, or siete de la noche, rather. Numero tres, a que hora te despiertas? Is asking, what time do you usually wake up? Me despierto a las, and then the time, and time of day. For example, me despierto, yo me despierto a las siete de la mañana. And finally, number four, a que hora te acuestas? It's asking what time do you go to bed? Yo me acuesto a las diez de la noche. Those are your warm questions for today. Using the appropriate numbers for each of them, now we'll go over the notes. Key notes there for ser versus a star, the T chart that articulates the conjugations of ser and estar, both meaning the verb to be, both have irregular conjugations. Irregular in that you don't just remove the ar or the er and add o, as, a, amos, an, right? The acronym that helps you remember when to use the verb ser, the acronym doctor, date, occupation, characteristic, time, origin, and relation. And then the acronym for estar is place, position, location, action, condition, and emotion. So that T-chart, very helpful in laying out the situations for each, the context, in which we use ser and estar respectively, the conjugations for each. That information is all articulated on page 86 of the textbook. And that page is also where we did a few practice exercises, uh, exercises 19 and 20, which would be worthwhile going over. You can look at the agenda from last, uh, the beginning of last week, last Tuesday and Wednesday have the correct answers provided there and the keywords for each answer are highlighted there in yellow whether it's a adjective providing a characteristic a uh, noun indicating relation or another noun referring to location or an emotion for example uh, will help you choose whether to use ser or estar. Exercise 19, and then exercise 20 uses estar exclusively 
to indicate how these people feel uh, because estar is used with emotions, like these adjectives, to be bored, tired, content or happy, enthusiastic, nervous, occupied, and tranquil or just chill, calm. And you can again look at the daily agenda video from last week when we did these exercises together. I would also go over in preparation for next uh, class in the quiz that you have this PowerPoint, which you can access by clicking on that hyperlink. And so this PowerPoint goes over the situations that call for ser and estar, just in greater detail, providing more examples in Spanish. I'm going to go through a little bit more quickly. And I otherwise would when we did this together. And then here you have the practice. The correct answers are provided, but this is really good practice in addition to the ones we did out of the textbook and your homework and the worksheets we did together if you're looking to get some additional practice to prepare for your quiz I would recommend doing these last three slides alright so that is the set start PowerPoint which again can be found right here and those two assignments that are due, or tonight, that are due for tonight you guys can take a look at the videos uh, if you need help on either of those, let's go to page 99 now and introduce numbers in Espanol. A ver, los números en la página 99. Vea tan. So we'll go over these together in class. You'll take notes. Again, on page 99. Of all the numbers listed here, I'll also provide you on the board uh, the numbers 1 through 19 in the event that you need those, or you can look those up easily online if you need them. But we'll go over those together in, in class. We'll go over how to provide the date in Espanol. Uses this formula, L, followed by the cardinal number. These are all cardinal numbers here. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, etc. So L, which means the, followed by the cardinal number, and then de, which means of, and then the months of the year. Enero, febrero, marzo, abril, mayo, junio, julio, agosto, septiembre, Octubre, Noviembre, y Diciembre are the months of the year in Espanol. The day, or excuse me, the year rather, is always given using complete numbers. So you know how in English we would express the year uh, instead of, for example, 1980, or excuse me, 1984, we would say 1984 in English break it into two numbers, right? In Spanish, the year uh, isn't broken into different numbers. It's given as a complete number. So this is my birth year, for example. Instead of saying 1984, we express that year as a complete number. Mil, which is a thousand. Novecientos, which is 900. Ochenta, 1984. That's how we express years in the target language. We'll do exercise two together. Expressing prices in Spanish. For example, numero uno, un bolso de cuero, cuesta 515 pesos. 
una cartera cuesta 325 pesos. Unos pantalones cuestan 250 pesos. 515, 325, 250. And then for exercise four, for you history buffs, we'll go over some important dates in world history and how we articulate those days in Espanol. For example, el día de la independencia de los Estados Unidos fue el 4 de julio de 1776. Uh, our Independence Day is July 4th, el 4 de julio, 1776, 1776. In English, we would say 1776 for the year. In Spanish, it's always given as a complete number, 1776. And 76. Number one, the first, uh, the beginning of the academic year, so the year uh, that the start of the school year began in. El año del primer viaje de Cristóbal Colón is the first trip to, excuse me, the first, yeah, the first trip or the arrival of Christopher Columbus to the Americas. El año del viaje de los peregrinos, when the pilgrims first came to the Americas. El año del primer viaje a la luna, when we first successfully uh, landed on the moon. And then number five, el fin de la segunda guerra mundial, the end of 